how to forgive. I've spoken about forgiveness in the past, uh, but I wanted to revisit this topic of forgiveness because there's been a lot more questions that have come up about forgiveness from, from the very night that I talked about forgiveness, which it's my most viewed talk on YouTube, to now where I've actually gotten new revelations and understanding on the importance of forgiveness in trauma recovery. And so I want to share my, my new understanding with you on that and also answer some of the additional questions that have been raised around the concept of forgiveness. Uh, now, everyone has a different story. Uh, Josh's story is that he was raised by a single mother. So his relationship with his mother was close, although his mother was imperfect. Even more imperfect was a boyfriend that she had coming around the house. You see, this boyfriend would actually be abusive to Josh. So this boyfriend, when the mom wasn't around, uh, he would make threats to Josh. You better do this, otherwise you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning. Josh would be so afraid of this boyfriend when he was in the house that at night, Josh would try to lock the door to his bedroom and he would sleep with a screwdriver by his bed so he'd have something to defend himself with because he was so afraid of this threatening boyfriend. Uh, but his mother's boyfriend really escalated from bad to worse. And one day Josh got in a fight with him. The police were called and to Josh's dismay, the police took the boyfriend's side and told Josh he needed to learn to respect his elders. After that, Josh realized he needed to move out of this toxic environment. So he moved across the country, but he's still worried about his mom. And he felt guilty leaving his mom behind, but he figured my mom can take care of herself. After all, she's an adult. However, there was a fateful incident. One day when the mother came home, the, the boyfriend was cutting up the furniture with a box cutter. And when the mother confronted him, he said that he intended to burn the house down. And he started trying to light the furniture on fire. Gratefully, the mother was able to get away and call the police, and the police were able to intervene before the situation escalated from bad to worse, and the man got locked up. But after this incident, it shook Josh so much that he had experienced a trauma. He felt like he, he, he really let his mom down. He wasn't there to protect his mom when things got difficult. And in his heart, he, he developed a, a, a grudge, a hatred, a need for revenge. He felt like, I, if I could just get my hands on that man. In fact, he got on the first plane home, back to Atlanta where his mom lived. And he wanted to get his hands around the neck of this man who threatened his mother's safety. But alas, he wasn't able to because this man was locked up. And so as time passed, he continued to ruminate and think about what he would do if he could just get this man and how unacceptable this man's uh, behavior was towards his mom. And he vowed to take revenge. But one day his mother called him and said, I just received news. My ex-boyfriend died. He took his own life. You see, it turned out that this, this man was suffering from mental health issues. Due to a brain tumor, he was behaving as if he were bipolar. When Josh realized that the very thing he wished on this man, which was death, has now come to pass, he actually started to feel guilty. He felt responsible for the fact that, that he had held on to resentment for, to, uh, uh, toward a man for something he couldn't even control. After all, this man had a mental disorder. Josh felt like, why, why did I hate this man? Why couldn't I forgive this man when this was just one incident? This was one time that, that he had a, a, a shortness of, of, of being able to control himself. Why couldn't I let it go? And now this man is dead. And this is what I wished on him. And Josh became consumed with guilt. And he couldn't, he couldn't let it go. And he started to have even nervous breakdowns. He was having nightmares. Finally, a friend helped him to reach out to mental health professionals. 
and they prescribed him medication. Josh said the medication helped, kind of. <laughs> he said he, he would take the medication and it, it would, he wouldn't have anxiety, he wouldn't have depression anymore, um, but now he had an addiction to the medication and also it would kind of block his thoughts. So he never dealt with the issue. He still had all of those feelings in the back of his mind. And he wanted to be able to really process and deal with the issues, but he felt so afraid because there was so much darkness there. And then he turned 26. See, when you turn 26, that means that you're no longer able to be on your parents' health care plan. So that means just like that, he loses his mental health care. So he was unable to have his medications anymore. Once he was unable to afford medications, he went to, through very bad withdrawal symptoms. That was very painful because he was addicted to these medications. And now the darkness got worse. Now he had to deal with all of the hate and all of the guilt that he was experiencing in his mind. And it was all consuming. It just overtook him. And a friend reminded him about uh, some books that he could read. So he would get very deep into reading these books. And he was reminded of a concept the concept was forgiveness. And so as Josh started to look deeper into forgiveness, he realized this is what he's been missing. He failed to forgive the man. He needs to move through his life with forgiveness. And so Josh started forgiving everyone, anyone he had a grudge against, anyone in the future or in his present that was doing anything, he would just forgive them and forgive them freely. And Josh felt this incredible weight lift off of him. And he started to feel whole again but there was still something missing and it was nagging at him. His guilt became so bad that he found himself dialing the suicide hotline one day. And that's when he had an epiphany. He had forgiven everyone except himself. When Josh realized that he needed to forgive himself and he went through the process of letting go his own guilt for having had resentment toward the man that threatened his mother, he started to feel better. Today, Josh travels and teaches people about the importance of self-forgiveness, and he's healthy now. The last time that I spoke about forgiveness, I took the stance that forgiveness was not essential for healing. The reason I took that stance is because a majority of the clients that I work with are survivors of heinous crimes, assault, rape, incest. It didn't sit well with me that I would have to ask these survivors to forgive their attackers, their assailants, in order for them to heal. And it didn't seem necessary to me intellectually, and I was right to a degree. It is not necessary for you to forgive your assailant in order for you to heal. But what I overlooked is that if you don't practice forgiveness, then you don't know how to forgive yourself. And it is essential that you forgive yourself in order to heal. Because self-compassion, self-love, all of that is, is essential to healing the original wound, which is where you abandoned yourself, which is where you decided not to love yourself. The original wound is where we decided that we are not enough or that we are not complete or that we are to blame for the abuse that we experience or the neglect that we experience. So in order to heal that wound, we have to be able to love ourselves, accept ourselves. That means we have to be able to forgive ourselves. We need to be good forgivers. Are you a good forgiver? When I've started talking to clients about this concept of forgiveness, I've gotten the question, uh, how do I forgive? And, and also, um, does forgiving mean that, that, we, that we are basically letting an abuser back into our life, having access to us again? And so I want to make sure I cover these things thoroughly tonight and make it very clear. 
and abundantly clear what it really means to forgive, how you can forgive, and how you can keep yourself safe. Because of course, although we want to forgive someone, we don't want to give someone license to continue to hurt us, to continue to abuse us. It can be difficult to forgive someone who's hurt you because you you can get angry when they hurt you. You can get into your righteousness. You see, you feel like what they did was so wrong. It was so, so inept. It was so depraved. It was so morally unacceptable that you must, with every fiber of your being, reject them and what they have done. And so the idea of forgiveness is actually counterintuitive. Counterintuitive meaning it goes against your intuition. Your intuition is your instincts. Your intuition is run by your subconscious mind. Intuition is prejudice. It's the ability to make a split decision without sitting and reasoning on a bunch of information. So to go against the intuition means that we are actually living in the conscious mind. Sometimes we have to do things that are counterintuitive and forgiving on one level can seem counterintuitive because we're actually allowing a person to get away with the crime that they've done. The first thing we have to understand is that it's not our job to play God. So when a person does something wrong, if they assault you, if they lie to you, if they cheat on you, if they, if they, if they sin against you, it is not your job to play judge and ex- executioner of this person. We're not built for that. You see, because we can't read their heart. We can't read minds. And, and we're inept to know all of the details of any given situation. We can't see into the future. We don't know a person's pe- total past and history. So it's not our job to judge. And that is one basis why we must forgive. We were not built to take on our backs the judgment and the sentencing of a person who does something wrong. So we're acting against our nature. We're acting against what we were built for because we were not made to be gods. We are made to be kings and queens of your sovereign nation because you are like a sovereign nation. It is your responsibility to rule your nation. So you make the rules for or the boundaries for your territory, which is you. You dictate what you will tolerate and how you will be treated, but you don't decide when someone else needs to be punished for their wrong error, even if it was against you or your mom or your child. We have to be forgiving even though it goes against our intuition. You see, when someone does something wrong, it's like it puts us on the moral high ground. It's like it pulls us to a superior position. And so now it's counterintuitive. It's against our subconscious inclination to give up that moral high ground. But we must recognize, we must check ourselves because we are actually not superior to anyone. We need to check that thinking. Even though that person has done something wrong, they've done something we would never do. We are not superior to that person because we've made mistakes as well. And that's one of the first things we have to remember. Bring yourself down a little bit and recognize that you must forgive partially because you need to be forgiven, not just now or for your past, but in the future, you will need to count on someone in this universe forgiving you. And so you're not stocking up your bank account very well uh, to, to spend everything on holding a grudge on someone else. It doesn't really do anything to the person anyway. It doesn't actually punish a person that we've decided to hold a grudge against them or we've decided to resent them. But we can feel afraid to forgive because we're afraid of of being vulnerable again to attack. We're afraid to give someone something they're not worthy of. But that's the very essence of forgiveness. It's a superlative quality. We are doing something that's above animal level thinking. 
We are giving someone out of generosity something they do not deserve. This is an opportunity that should make you excited to give someone something beyond what they deserve is a privilege. It is an honor. And so we're happy to forgive a person, even though they don't deserve it, especially when they don't deserve it. That's when the forgiveness is really deep forgiveness. But what is, what is to, the, to the situation where they've done something wrong to you and so you fear that if you, if you let it go, it's making you vulnerable again to attack. See, there we need to separate forgiveness from forgetting. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. They're two different concepts. Forgiveness is not the same as restoring trust. They're two different concepts. You see, you can forgive, that is to let go of the need to take revenge, the need to see justice, the need to be morally superior, the need to look down on and to judge. You can forgive someone, that means to let go of any of the visceral nasty energy, not to allow it to house in your body. You can forgive, but you do not need to forget, you do not need to reconcile in all cases with that person. If the person is not coming to you for reconciliation, for instance, let's say they didn't apologize. Let's say they're not even aware that you're going through the process of forgiving them. It may not be necessary. It may not even be proper. It may not even be intelligent to, to, to trust them again. And so you can maintain your boundary. When I talk about forgiveness, I'm talking about what you're doing inside the work that you're doing. I'm not talking about allowing them all of the rights and the privileges they originally had. No. It's reasonable that you're going to set boundaries for that person. It's reasonable that you're going to draw a line in the sand and say, okay, I'm going to let that go, but <laughs> you no longer cross this line. I'm not going to feel the resentment for you in my heart but I don't feel like I can trust you again. That's proper. And it's still true forgiveness. In order to do this, it does take humility. We have to recognize that we can't determine how to judge someone, what a person truly deserves. When we let that go, it makes it easier for us to forgive because when we're caught up in our own version of justice, as if we're God and we have to decide what everyone in this universe deserves and we have to give it to them according to what they deserve. That's a very all-consuming process and, and our brains are really not made for that. So it takes humility to recognize, you know what? That's not me. It's not my job. It's not my job to make sure that they get paid back for what they did. That's not my job. My job is to take care of me my sovereign nation, to make sure my sovereign nation is healthy. And that's me. That's my job. And, and, and it can't be healthy if I'm holding on to resentment for this other person. It can't be healthy if I'm poisoning myself with hatred and with, with bitterness toward this person. It can't be healthy if I don't forgive. And so we recognize that for ourselves, we let things go. The way that we can do this in terms of how it's done is to recognize two things. One, try to find what is excusable about this other person or about what they've done. Now, sometimes the atrocity is so bad that it's just inexcusable. But you want to try to find some basis to excuse them. It could be that they have a mental disorder. It could be that maybe they do. It could be that they don't know any better. It could be that they know better, but they are imperfect and you recognize their imperfection. Find a basis, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, and cling on to that basis as a basis to forgive that person. Again, it doesn't mean that you are excusing the error completely. 
It's just giving you a, a point, something you can hang on to, that you can hinge on to, so that you can make the move, the shift inside of yourself. And so recognizing that sometimes we don't understand all the circumstances behind why someone said something or did something, understanding that people are responding out of their own hurt, out of their own trauma, and hurt people, hurt people. Having the, the, the insight to realize that some people, sometimes it's just that maybe they lack the, the intelligence or the knowledge that they would have needed to, to, to act in a decent manner. Whatever the case, find something you can hinge your forgiveness on, some, some way in which uh, you can find uh, it excusable. And then the second thing is you have to recognize your own guilt. Now, in any given situation, we may have been purely the victim. So maybe there's no particular guilt on our part in that situation. But recognizing your guilt is more of a universal process. You're using this just specifically in the moment of forgiveness to recognize how you too are someone who may need forgiveness in the future. One of the main basis of forgiving is understanding that we want to be forgiven and we should forgive others the way we want to be forgiven. And that way we're treating others as we would want to be treated even though they can't feel it or they don't know it, or maybe we haven't communicated it, we're doing it on a universal level. We're allowing, we're changing the entire field in this, in the, in the energy field around us by recognizing and changing our specific energy from that of bitterness and resentment to lightness and forgiveness. We know we're doing it. And so we reap the rewards. We reap the rewards in our health. We reap the rewards in our physical health and our metaphysical health. We reap the rewards. We have our peace. We have our time. We have our energy. We're not literally burning up our calories, trying to hold on to a grudge or resentment, trying to plot a revenge or take vengeance. We are free. We are free. Someone can wrong us at three o'clock and by 3.30, we can be having a great day. We are free. So when people ask me, how can I forgive? My answer to that is as fast as possible. You should forgive as quickly as possible. You should allow it to be a situation where in the very moment that the person assaults you, hits you, in the time it takes you to bring your face back up, have already decided in your mind, I'm going to forgive you for that. That quickly? Yes, that quickly. Allow it to be a way of life, an automated way of thinking. I'm going to forgive you for that. I'm going to set some boundaries. I'm going to protect myself. I'm not going to forget that you're an untrustworthy person. I'm not going to make the same mistake again, but I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to seek vengeance. I'm not going to seek resentment or, or, or revenge. I'm not going to hold on to resentment. I'm not going to hold on to a grudge. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to forgive it. I'm going to focus on, number one, what I understand about you, which is what helps me to see it as excusable. You're ignorant. You don't know any better. You have your own trauma. There's things that I don't know and don't understand about your situation. And I'm not the judge. And then I'm going to recognize about myself. I've done things wrong. I've been ignorant. I have my own trauma. I've hurt people. I want to be forgiven. So I'm just going to let everything go right now. Just like that. It takes practice, but allow this to be your way of life, your automated mode of thinking. We need forgiveness, so we forgive others. But we must apply this to ourselves. Some people have the self-talk like, I can't forgive myself. When you say, I can't forgive myself, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You are speaking that 
into existence because you actually are telling your subconscious mind. When you say, I can't forgive myself, your subconscious mind says, oh, okay. And then it, it's a personal assistant to you. Whatever you tell your subconscious mind, it takes that as command. So if you say, I can't forgive myself, I just cannot forgive myself, then the subconscious mind will not forgive you. It will punish you over and over with cortisol. It's not broken. People are going to mental, mental institutions because they won't forgive themselves. But your brain is not broken. It's doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> it's waiting on you to tell it what it's supposed to do. Give it the right commands. Stop telling it to, to, to send you to the hospital. Tell your subconscious instead, I got to forgive myself. I got to. I have to. Because this is the only healthy route to take. If I don't forgive myself, if I don't forgive myself, I'm like a person who wants to bathe himself, but actually drowns himself. Can you picture someone who says, well, you know, I'm dirty, and they jump into maybe a pond or, or, or a tank of water, but instead of just bathing, they hold themselves under until they start to drown. What is the sense of that? That makes about the same amount of sense as having so much guilt in a situation that you're allowing it to kill you, to crush you, to punish you. Forgive yourself. Use guilt properly. In the moment where you do something wrong, where something happens, you get the punishing sensation. Use it as a signal to recognize what you've done wrong and learn from the situation. That's what the guilt is there for. It's a signal to you, hey, that was wrong. And you recognize, oh, you're right. That was wrong. Okay. Okay. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to do this and that anymore. That's it. It's time to forgive yourself. That's it. Back quickly. You get the guilt. That's a signal. Recognize what the signal means. Oh, that means I did something wrong. Okay. I'm not going to do this and that anymore. All right. I know what to do. And move on. Because you do not have space in your temple for all of that negative energy. It's not right to spend your calories, your food, your hard-earned money, and burn it up on resentment, anger, bitterness, strife, and, and everything that's going to kill you, that's going to destroy you. Because too much cortisol in the system leads to weight gain, lower immune system, high blood pressure, heart problems, the list goes on. High anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, the list goes on. We cannot have all of that cortisol in our system. We cannot have all of that energy in our temple. We cannot have all of that negativity in our sovereign nation. So we make the choice consciously. I'm going to let it go. I forgive me. I got to let it go. Just like I forgive other people, I forgive me. When you're in the practice of forgiving other people, quickly, bam, they slap you, face comes up. You know what? I'm going to I'm, I'm let that go. I'm going to forgive you for that. Then you can become quick at forgiving yourself. Bam, you make a mistake. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's okay. You live and you learn. And then you move on. That quickly? Yes, that quickly. How should you forgive? As quickly as possible. Don't take too much time on the negative energy. Let the energy, the emotions be energy in motion. Let it run through you. Don't hold on to the negativity. This was a difficult subject for me to, to speak about because... Uh, I haven't felt any resentment in more than 20 years. I was able to learn how to forgive very early, and I'm grateful for that. But it was because I started my religious studies very early as a teenager. I made a decision for myself that I would study the Bible and I would get baptized. And it was my study of scriptures that led me to to the understanding, because in the scriptures, it teaches that 
you will be forgiven by God according to the way you forgive. And I said, oh, wow, that, that did it for me. You'll be forgiven by God the way that you forgive others. It's so simple. So that means that if I go around holding grudge against people, God's not going to forgive me? No way. I can't handle that. And what's better is it gives me some control. So you're saying that I can influence the way God forgives me. That's the way I saw it. So, so that means if I go around and I forgive people like that quickly, then God will take the same attitude toward me. Oh, that's really great news. And that's the way I saw it at about 15 years old. And I made the decision that I would forgive everyone. And that wasn't easy because I had, I had a grudge. I had total hate, hatred and resentment in my heart for my mother, who was narcissistic and abusive. I hated her. I decided at least around 12 years old, maybe earlier, that I absolutely hated my mother. For my entire childhood, I can't remember a time I didn't hate her, right up until about the age of 15, where due to my study of the scriptures, I realized I'm going to have to let this go if I want to get close to God, if I want to get baptized. And so I've told you the story before where, where I went to my mom and I told her, you know what? I have hated you. There I was 15 years old looking her in her face like I've hated you my entire life, but I am going to let that go. And of course, it didn't really seem like it penetrated the, the thick narcissistic skull exactly, but that wasn't my concern. My concern was with what it was doing for me. And you don't have to tell someone, by the way, that you've forgiven them. But I was concerned with what it was doing for me. And it felt great. Once I let it go, and it took humility to do that. Well, once I let it go, I felt great. And I never, I never held resentment against anyone ever again. And I don't want you to feel like I've lived an insulated uh, life where nothing bad has ever happened to me. I've been betrayed by anyone who was close to me in my life, almost anyone. I've been through all types of downfalls and, and issues, but again and again, I, I utilize, I lean on my ability to just forgive and I apply it to myself. I do not go around with deep uh, guilt for days and years and weeks for some mistake that I've made. I let it go. I let it go. And that allows me to have all the good chemicals and to, and to live in my power and to improve quickly. So rather than worrying about the fact that I made a mistake back in 1992, I'm focusing on today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day being the man I want to be, living the way I want to be because I control this. I control my actions now. And when we focus on what we control, we are in our power. When we are in our power, we're an imitation of God. And that concept of forgiving quickly, it was when I read the account, also as a teenager, of Jesus on the night of his death. The soldiers were beating him. They were in the process of killing him. And he prays up and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> While he's getting beat. He's praying for the people who are beating him to be forgiven. I just thought, wow, <laughs> that is the level of forgiveness I want to attain to. That is the superlative quality of being forgiving, of being a person who is conscious, the conscious being who is more than just, just the earthly terrestrial body who is living in that positive energy state, who is spiritual. That is what I wanted to be. And as a result, I've enjoyed the adaptive results of being a forgiving person for the last 20 something years. And I am coming to you. It was difficult for me to even try to explain it because now the neural pathways have been built to forgive so quickly that it's hard for me to understand how to even explain how to forgive because it's so natural. It's like asking a professional quarterback, how do you throw a football? It's like, 
it takes a minute for them to even process how to explain it because it's all they do. It's so natural to them. And so I invite you to join me, allow this to become a natural state of mind for you. Allow this to become second nature. As you practice forgiveness, you will build a new neural pathway in your mind that will allow you to forgive automatically and live a life that's free from the negativity and the crimes and the errors that your enemies commit. Allow yourself to be free. Free yourself. Forgive. I appreciate so much everyone who is here tonight and who uh, listened to the talk. Um, if you guys have questions about this, you can feel free to reach out to me. Uh, Wednesday night, we can also talk more about it. Everyone's invited back, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, Wednesday night. It's going to be the same Zoom link. You can go to meetup.com to, to get those updated links. 